What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and today I have another video in my beginner to a pro uh, series and today's topic is going to be curtain walls. So the beginner to pro series basically means that uh, inside of one video I want to show you kind of the, the basic setup, the basic uh, uh, use of a certain tool but then we explore some of the more advanced features and settings just so you can get a complete picture about how that tool is used inside of the kind of the the shortest uh, possible video format. Uh, now if you want to learn more about Revit and if you're serious about learning Revit, uh, I would like to encourage you to check out my website BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Uh, now there I have a whole beginner to intermediate level course as well as an intermediate to advanced level course where I pretty much cover everything that there is to know to kind of get started with Revit. Uh, also, apart from that, uh, I have many more different courses that cover many different topics in Revit. Everything is kind of uh, slow, step by step and explained in depth so you can get a complete understanding of how everything operates. Uh, also on my website you can find my customized Revit templates, you can find some really high quality Revit families as well as a template. So make sure to check it out. And also one more thing, uh, make sure to like this video, it really helps me out a lot and make sure to subscribe. Not only does it help you not miss any of my future videos, but also it makes the alpaca happy. And come on guys, let's make the alpaca happy. Okay, now let's jump into Revit. And as you can see, here we are. And this is the project that I'm going to be using. Uh, so for this, uh, for this video, as I said, the topic is curtain walls, and we're going to be adding a curtain wall here. Uh, but before we do that, let's just explore kind of placing regular curtain walls just in space. So the curtain wall tool is a part of the regular wall tool in Revit. So when I go here to the architecture tab on the build panel, we have the wall tool. And if I just click on that uh, here in the properties, if I expand all of the all of the types, you'll see that first we have the basic walls and then right below that we have the curtain walls. So that's kind of the second category here. And we have three options. So we have the curtain wall, the exterior glazing, and then also we have storefront. So the main difference between these is uh, kind of how complete they are. Uh, curtain walls are just glass, exterior glazing is glass with grids, and then storefront, it's the complete package. So if I just place a wall segment here, you'll see that we have the glass, but we also have the, the grids. Grids are can be accessed by using the tab key, so those are these kind of uh, dashed lines, and then the mullions are kind of the, the, the end uh, element that you add, and then this is your completed curtain wall. So for your curtain walls, once you place them, uh, the constraints are exactly the same as your regular walls. So you have your base constraint and then you have your top constraint. In this case, the base constraint is level one. The top constraint is unconnected. Let's connect it to level three, for example, hit apply. There we go. And uh, now we have that uh, curtain wall going from uh, level one up to level three. Uh, now, if I select this again, and if I scroll down, you'll see that here we have the vertical grid and the horizontal grid. And here we can only play around with the justification, uh, as you can see here, but that's it. We don't have the option to set up the number. So I'm going to be showing you that uh, just in a moment here, but let me just show you the, uh, the option for the for the justification. So basically what that means, and let's make this a bit smaller. So for example, in this case, as you can see, I have uh, this wall and here on the bottom, it has a complete panel, then it has another complete panel, and then we have this kind of half panel. So that's because the justification here for the uh, vertical grid is set to uh, beginning. Uh, or is that the horizontal, yeah, sorry, the horizontal grid, it's at the beginning. But if I set this to end and then hit apply, as you can see, it's just going to jump down. So we're going to have that half panel at the bottom and then two uh, completed panels. Uh, now, finally, you do have the option to have it centered. So then we have kind of two 
panels in the middle and then we have a couple of these corner panels in between. So it works the same way side to side. So this, as I said, this was the uh, this was the horizontal justification, the vertical justification is kind of side to side and then you can just kind of set up that uh, justification. Usually you have it at the beginning, but it's really up to you to choose what works best for your projects. Okay, now let's move to the edit type menu. So these were the instance properties. When I hit the edit type menu, here we get the type properties. So basically this means that all of these properties, if you make a change to this wall, wherever else you have the same wall, those changes will apply. So that's just something to keep in mind. Here we have the function exterior, that's kind of doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really mean anything. Then we have here automatically embedded, so that means that everything is just embedded uh, by default. Next we have the curtain panel, so uh, by default it's set to glazed. Uh, you can also change it to solid, so if I change this to solid and hit apply, here you can see it's no longer see-through, so you have that option. Uh, let's go back to glazed. Uh, but then also you have the option to have it empty. So you cannot delete the panels, you can only make them an empty panel. So if I set this to none, it will still have a panel. So you have to go with empty here, hit apply, click OK, and now we have no panels. So if I change this to shaded or, no, let's go with a realistic, yeah to realistic, as you can see, this is empty. Uh, or perhaps keep it shaded, yeah. Uh, but now if I select this and if I go back to edit type and if I change this from empty to glazed, apply, okay, now you'll see that now it has that glass, it has that uh, blue tint. So that's basically how you can make uh, panels empty, for example. Uh, now moving forward, let's go back here. What else you, that you will see here is that you can actually apply walls to this. So that's a bit odd. Usually you don't want to do that, but if you do want to have a panel that kind of has layers, you can use one of the walls, I guess. I wouldn't do it, but you, you can if you want. So anyways, that's just one of the options. And this is something that I'm going to be showing you how you can use this wall option as a trick, but we can do that later on. Okay, so moving forward, uh, we have the join conditions. So this basically currently says uh, vertical grids continuous. Uh, what that means is that here, uh, if I just okay out of this, you will see that the vertical grids are, well, continuous. They're not broken apart, but the horizontal ones are broken apart whenever they encounter a vertical grid. So that's basically what that is referring to. Obviously, you can change it to horizontal grids and then you have border and so on. Let's leave it as is for now. Uh, and then finally here, this is the important part, and that is the layout. So here uh, it's set to maximum spacing for the vertical grid and then for the horizontal grid it's set to fixed distance. So the horizontal grid is basically this and then the vertical grid is this, obviously. So uh, the spacing here is 152, I can change that to 150 or 140. So maximum spacing, what that basically means is that it's going to be either 140 or uh, less than that. So as long uh, when the panels become over 140, it's going to insert just another vertical grid there. Same thing goes uh, with the horizontal grid, but it's set to uh, fixed spacing. So uh, that's that basically means that it's not going to try to kind of adjust all panels to be the same uh, width as it does for the vertical grid. So basically the vertical grid will change all the time. Uh, let me find the view for this. Uh, that should be east elevation, I think. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so here what you'll see is that when I go from uh, one of these, can I find the grid? No, okay. So if I just go like this, it's uh, 123. And if I try to measure the second one, again, it's 123. Now, if I change the grid here, or change these a little bit, make some movement. It's still, it's going to change the number, so now it's 114, and then here it's 114. So uh, the distances are always going to be the same in between the, the mullions, uh, but the, those distances will obviously change to adapt to the width of the, of the wall. Okay, so we have that covered now. And then finally, let's go back to edit type here and just uh, one more thing that's really important and that is the vertical mullions. So here, 
uh, or vertical and horizontal mullions. So these are the mullion families that are used. So you have the interior type, so those are the ones on the inside, and then you have the border type, which are the ones on the outside. So for example, for this, what you can do is you can say, okay, I want the interior ones to be smaller and then the, the border types, so the ones on the outside to be larger. So I can just change the interior type here to, I don't know, like uh, 30, 30 millimeters square. Same thing goes for the uh, vertical ones as the horizontal ones. So just the interior ones, not the outside. So when I hit apply, okay. You'll see that here we have those big panels on the outside, but we have the, the smaller panels or smaller mullions to be exact on the inside. Doesn't look that good because of these gaps here, which are annoying, but you can actually fix those as well. So you can just come in here and you can toggle this mullion, uh, mullion join, and then it's going to fix that issue. So uh, you can uh, do that as well. So if you want to customize this even further, you can just come in here and then this just toggles that. So you can go back and forth between those two options. So that's just uh, another kind of more advanced level of uh, customization that you can do. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just select this wall and then hit delete because I don't need it anymore. So let me show you now uh, some more advanced things. Let's see this thing in action. So I'm just going to go here to the floor plans. Let's go to level one floor plan and let's say I want to add a curtain wall over here on this wall. So I'm just going to go here to the curtain wall, storefront. Uh, let's go up to level two and then give it a top offset of 260, so 260 centimeters. So it goes from level one up to level two plus 260. So then let's come in here, click on this wall, click here, there we go. Hit the escape key a few times, let's go to the 3D view, and then this is what that looks like. Uh, here you can perhaps fix these up a little bit if you want, so for example here I can just change these joins so they look a bit better. Same thing goes here above. And now we're going to uh, explore some uh, additional customization. So one thing that I really dislike is that you can kind of create that layout and the layout can look uh, it can look okay. Uh, I mean the, the kind of the spacing in between these uh, these mullions, but in a lot of cases you will have to customize that to the building. So for example here we can see this floor obviously and we usually don't want to see that. So how do we fix that? Well what you want to do is now you want to kind of take over and customize these grids even further. So the grids are, see these dashed lines that come up? Sometimes you cannot see them, so you have to use the tab key a few times, and it's going to highlight that grid. Uh, lower In the lower left corner, you can see it says curtain wall grid. When you select that, it's going to be pinned in place. That's because it has been kind of it's that kind of first uh, checkbox that we had that kind of holds everything together, but you can easily unpin it by either unpinning it here or you can just click on this unpin button as well, and now you can move it. So when you unpin it, you can move it, and then here I can just say, okay, I want this to be from the bottom here at, I don't know, like, well, we can go with 30 centimeters there. Then we can take this one, and then we can unpin that one as well, and we can say, okay, I want it to be, I want it to be perfectly aligned, for example, with the floor, so I'm going to say zero, and there we go. So now, basically, we have just these small windows that are kind of around that uh, floor. Now, in a lot of cases, you don't want to see that floor. So what I can do is I can use the tab key here. So I'm just hovering over the uh, kind of the corner here, using the tab key a few times until, let's see, I might have to move the cursor a little bit. There we go, until I can highlight the, the panel. So I can select this panel and I wanna select actually all three of these. So I'm just going to select one. I'm going to right click, go to select panels and go along horizontal grid. So when I click that, it's going to select all three of them and then I can unpin them all at once by using the unpin tool or UP is the shortcut. And then I can go here and change this to, let's see, solid. And there we go. So now we have solid panels in place here. And then above we have just a regular 
uh, regular glass panels. Now, uh, these solid panels, uh, if you're not happy with them, you can go to edit type and then you can change the offset. If you change it to zero, let's see what goes happens. Okay, minus, I don't know, one centimeter. Okay, now they seem to be flush. And also what they like to do is I like to change the material uh, to something like mirror or something like that. So you can do that. I, I'm just going to leave it as is right now. But there we go. Now we have those panels that are non-transparent, which looks much better for this particular case. Okay, then let's add something else. Let's say that we want to have a bit of a different layout down here uh, where we might want to add a wider door or something like that. So what I can do here is now I can play around even further with this grid system. So what I'll do is I'll go here on the build panel. You'll see that we have a curtain system, curtain grid and mullion. So I want to use the curtain grid. So I'm just going to select on that. I have this all segments option and then I can just go here and let's say that I want to have a door that's 210 centimeters tall. So I'm just going to click there. There we go. And then I actually don't want these mullions, these uh, here, to run all the way down. So I can select that grid line. See how it highlights the grid. I can select it and I can go here to add remove grid segments. So I can click on that. I can click on this segment here and it removes that segment below. I can do the same thing here remove that perfect and then I can go back to the grid tool go with one segment option and then I can add grids like this so as you can see we're completely changing the layout here it's 75 here it's 70 okay that works and now what I can do is I can just come in here select this one big panel I can unpin that and then I can add a door but the problem is we don't have a door here. So to load in a door, you have to go to the insert tab. You have to go to load family. And then here, let's go back a few folders. So you go to your family library, you go to doors, and then you want to search for the curtain wall. Okay, here we have the double storefront. Let's open that one up. So now it's loaded in. So now I can select that panel. Again, I'm just using the tab key to, so just hover over it, use the tab key once or twice, it's going to highlight that, then you click to select, and then you use that door. And there we go. If I change the detail level to fine, it's even going to display the, the door handles. So this is now a lot more customized than it was previously. Now we can also add a window. So let's explore how to add a window. So for the window, we obviously need to add the sill for the window. So what they'll do is I'm just going to go here back to architecture, back to curtain grid, and let's use one segment and let's come in here. See how now it's like a hundred centimeters. I think that's okay for the sill. There we go. Uh, and now what I'll do as well is just go to the insert tab, go to load family, and now I want a window for the curtain wall. And for that, let's go back a folder, go to windows. And then here we should have a curtain wall, curtain wall. Oh, okay, here we go. Open. And then if I select this panel again, I'm just using the tab key a few times, unpin, and now we should have that window panel and I can add that one in as well. And now we have that window panel here. We can fix this up again. It's gonna mess it up when we added more grids, but I'm quite happy with that. And also here on the bottom, uh, in a lot of cases, you just don't want to have these mullions. So you just want to, oops, cancel that. So you just wanna select all three of these. Let's see, we should be able to delete these. There we go. And then we should be able to flip this. And now, as you can see, the door is all the way to the ground. And this looks really, really good. Now, as I said, I had one more trick up my sleeve that I wanted to show you. And for that, let's just make an additional curtain wall here. So curtain wall, storefront. Okay, so let's say that you want to add a door here, but you don't want to add one of these curtain wall doors. You might want to add just a regular door. I don't recommend this, definitely, but it is possible. So what you want to do is just come to this, use the tab key to select the panel, unpin that, and then here you can actually use a wall for that panel. So I can assign like one of the smaller walls, whatever you want to use. Let's use this one. And now it has a wall there. And when you have a wall, you can host a door. 
So I can host the door there. I cannot host it here, but I can host it here, which is really cool. Obviously, I would recommend you make sure that the dimensions match the, the, the curtain panel, but it is an odd solution to a problem. But again, as I said, I do not recommend this solution, I think what they've done here works much, much better. So there you go. I hope you have learned a lot of new things about curtain walls. Uh, if you want to get this project file, you can find it on my Patreon page. So I'm going to include it. Just the link will be in the description and also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe uh, for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.